our laws as it pertains to substances are draconian and bizarre. The psychopaths start this way. He was an alcoholic. Because of social media and pornography, PTSD, love addiction. Fentanyl and heroin, ridiculous. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a doctor for <laughs> sake. Where the hell you think I learned that? I'm just saying, you go to treatment before you kill people. I am a clinician. I observe things about these chemicals. Let's just deal with what's real. We used to get these calls on Loveline all the time. Educate adolescents and to prevent and to treat. If you have trouble, you can't stop and you want to help stop it. I can help. I got a lot to say. I got a lot more to say. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm seeing everybody pile in here. Uh, yeah, we've got a lot to get into today. Thank you, uh, Allie, for saying it looks like a great show today. I think you're absolutely correct. High Cathedral City, Laverne, Arizona, New York City. My goodness, Anna Maria, how's it going there? I was looking at the numbers in New York City this morning, and it's still astonishing. So uh, we, will, we will update some of that stuff a little bit later. We've got a bunch of guests I want to get to. We are going to start with uh, Drilled with Dr. Brady. Dr. Brady Smith is making a follow-up visit here. He uh, has a charitable organization where he restores people's mouths, and we've got one of his potential patients on the line here. Hey, man, how are you? I'm doing good, Drew. Thanks so much for being on. I appreciate it. So Brady and I got to know each other through our mutual friend, Mr. Steve-O, and uh, since then, I'm a big supporter of Brady, which which made Randy Hauska angry, who is your buddy and my buddy, and so we're going to get Randy in here, too, to talk about his, his uh, charitable organization. But first, you tell us again about yours. Uh, perfect. Yeah, so my charitable organization is called the Drilled Podcast Network, and I set that up last year uh, in 2019, and our, it goes along with my podcast, Drilled with Dr. Brady. And we have these giveaways where we choose people at certain intervals, about every six months, and, and we restore their smiles completely without fees or charging them. And one of our goals is to be the most impactful dental charity that exists by recruiting more and more dentists to take on a case or two a year because we know that that impact would be tremendous. Well, you were also telling me, we, you, I think you were on the Dr. Drew podcast, and we, we were talking about how when you decided to do this, it really changed your, your sense of your profession, really. Oh, as far as personal fulfillment, absolutely correct. It changed the way I looked at my profession when I can use my skills and talents to help other people and make their lives better because of what I can do for them. Uh, it changed the way I looked at my profession and my life and, and has been an extremely positive motivator for me going forward. I, I had a similar experience. I uh, signed up to do uh, ICU work in New York City on behalf of Governor Cuomo, and just just going through the interview process, I got excited about being purposeful and getting getting involved in this. So uh, I uh, hopefully will be going to the front lines if uh, Governor Cuomo will have me. I've, I've done a lot of the kind of work that they need, so I, I get that feeling. I get I get that feeling. It it, it just makes you yeah. feel it just makes you feel purposeful. You just want to, you just want to, you know, you want to leave a legacy. You want people to say good things about you. You want people to feel like they're better off because they knew you or because you did something for them. And, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a certain personal fulfillment that comes along with that. Well, excellent. Well, I, as I said, they they apparently need physicians, and I will get on a plane and go there and serve if that's what they need. Although I must say, I haven't heard that's anything awesome. from the I haven't heard anything from the governor a couple of days. So I'm waiting to anxiously to see where I'm going to go. Uh, I, I'm fearful that because I'm in a risk category, you know, I'm 61, prostate cancer, hypertension, that they won't take me. So I'm I'm uh, you know I'm waiting to hear. So you got involved with uh, a, a, someone we got in touch, put you together with to rebuild her mouth. Can you tell us a little bit about that story? Because she is on the line now to give us an update. Yeah. So uh, her, her name is Allison, and she's uh, fantastic. And we've had some communication, and I was introduced through Allison through you, uh, through through your efforts and kind of uh, putting us together. And, and that's kind of the whole purpose of Drilled Podcast. Is why I'm so excited of about about you contacting me, because that's exactly what we want to be known for, is when someone needs help, we want to be there to help them out. Uh, so we are separated by some geographic distance. We are organizing a way to, to make that not a problem. But uh, And then the coronavirus messed everything up and, and grounded flights and, and, right. and makes it difficult to get everything done. But once it's all said and done, uh, we plan on getting her out to my office where we will uh, rebuild a smile that needs to be rebuilt. 
And Allison, you're on the line, correct? Hi, Dr. Drew. Hey there. Hey, so Dr. What, Brady. What's going on? Hi. What's the plan? How are you? What's, what's the latest? Well, I'm just, uh, I'm finally off of self-quarantine. I was presumed positive for COVID-19. Perfect. So I'm just hanging out and staying sane in South Philly. Um, looking forward to buying a plane ticket as soon as we can. How, how did you get exposed, if you don't mind me asking? Um, I went on a date with someone who had just gotten back from Manhattan. You, and you, you went on a date with somebody? Say that again. It, you went so. on a date with somebody who was just from New York City? Who had just come back from Manhattan, and Boy. he ended up apparently having it a few days later, Perfect. or a week or so later, I think. Perfect. I haven't really talked to him much since. So. Well, you're, you're... Yeah, but it was... I only had the mild symptoms. Which is great, which, but you're one of those Yeah, or only that, mild when you're comparing them to being on a ventilator. No, but I understand. I'm, I'm taking care of some, some of those patients presently, and it's 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 a pretty... It's a ferocious when it gets going. Uh what I would be interested in, you need to get your antibodies tested, right? But yeah, absolutely. I'm looking forward to being able to do that. Uh, my doctor has said they have that set up in Chester County, which is right outside of Philadelphia. Great. And as soon as they have it up and running, probably at UPenn, he's going to send me over to get my antibodies tested and I'll donate plasma as often as they'll let me. Fantastic. And then Brady, what's the plan? The plan is, uh, in fact, at this point now, uh, Allison, you don't even need to worry about your initial plane ticket. We're gonna, we've got some uh, an effort to take care of that for you. So uh, as soon as we can get you oh, able awesome. to fly Thank and travel, you. we're going to get you. We're going to get you over to, to my neck of the woods, and and start the whole process oh, of, awesome. of rebuilding so what needs to be rebuilt. How many? Procedures? So you're very welcome. I'm super excited to meet you. We've had a lot of text messaging back and forth, but super excited to get the ball rolling for you. And it's going to take more than a single visit, Thank right? Thank you. That's like many visits, I'm imagining. Yes. Yes. It could it could take uh, two, three, maybe even more visits, depending. But usually in about two or three visits, we're going to wrap up just about any any situation that's thrown our way. Wow. that's that's That sounds remarkable to me. I mean, when you think about... Like you know, orthopedic disaster, you know, situations where you need to you need multiple procedures to get things stabilized. That's great. That's great news. Uh, all right, and just well, we've also had um, we've also had a doctor, a dentist here in Philly who did actually step in and did all the impressions and the films and such. So you know, at least oh. that part was taken care of locally, nice. which we greatly appreciate. Yeah, that's correct. I reached out to a colleague of mine in Philadelphia who was able to take some preliminary x-rays and models that are that are saving us at least one visit for sure. That is great. That is great news. Well, Allison, uh, I hope you soon get to go travel. There'll be an interesting decision, Brady, if she's antibody positive. I mean, she theoretically might be somebody that could move around about quicker than the average person, right? Um, but she'd have to be... I, I hope that's so the fine. case. I mean, there's so much unknown here, but we hope. Yeah, vi you should have to be virus negative, antibody positive, and theoretically, I mean, again, we don't know a lot about the immune. To really, by the way, Allison, to really document that you have immunity, you have to have high levels of antibody, and that antibody has to be shown to be virus neutralizing. So that's kind of a sophisticated series of tests okay. you need to get if you're going to get on a plane and really move about. Um, I, I don't know how the government... So on what day can I go get that test done? Like, Because I'm on day 24 right now, and I've heard that you need to wait until you're at least day 28 before you can even get the antibody test. I, I mean, you could go now. I mean, I mean that's, it, that, those are not hard okay. and fast rules, but any time now, you're in pretty good shape. But again, you want to see virus neutral okay. antibodies. But uh, best of luck to you. Awesome. Good to I will you do that. I'll get on that this week. How, how come we don't have Allison's picture up here, Susan? Didn't we have a picture of Allison somewhere? Miss Producer? I didn't, I didn't know she wanted to. I don't oh. think they. Oh, she didn't want that. I don't know. Okay. I didn't know I'll if she wanted to. Next time. <laughs> oh, no. She's absolutely beautiful woman. I mean, she became. I, Facebook oh, pulled you. her out of my phone, and then I be I friended you. I don't know if you got that, but 
I'm Sue Saylor, S-U-S-A-I-L. I should probably check my face. Yeah, and I saw you, and I'm I'm really excited to see your teeth. It's going to be amazing. And, and again, Elsa, what happened to your teeth? What was the, the source Ooh, of the yeah. What was the source of the dental issues? Um, well, I was on the um, I was on pain management. It, right. I mean, my doctor was over prescribing right, right. I mean, like crazy for 14 years, and I quit cold turkey. And I also had some um, issues with anorexia and bulimia, but it. Um, it just you know causes all of your nerves to you know die off and all of the other damage it does to your body. It doesn't do anything good to your teeth either. And your your mental health standpoint, things are recovering. You're feeling good. Well, it's, you know, it's interesting because when I um, first had symptoms, people were still trying to understand what social distancing was. Mm. Uh, like they couldn't understand, stand on the X, don't get in my face and ask me why I'm not moving forward. Um, so then I went into quarantine. I just didn't leave, I didn't leave my apartment for three weeks. And fortunately, I have neighbors who were great, but um, going back out there, having a history with PTSD was kind of nuts. So... Um, you know, I definitely know how I react to those situations and have been stepping, you know, out for short walks here and there. And I finally built up to back to normal today. So feeling good and ready to you know, get back into the swing of things with the rest of the world. All right, Allison. We'll, we'll probably next time we talk to you, we have a new mouth. Okay. Wonderful. So, Thank you definitely. so much. And I'll talk okay, to you all so soon. You yeah, everyone stay healthy. Yes, indeed. Uh, Brady, let me bring in your buddy Randy Houska at this point. Randy, Let's also do it. also a dentist, also yes, sir. Yeah, hi Randy, Randy, Drew, um, Drew Huska, Huska, <laughs> seriously? You mean I've been mis I've been mispronouncing it all this time? Just for ten years. <laughs> Well, why did, why did you correct me before? <laughs> I don't know if you've ever said my last. I don't know if you've ever said my last name uh, out loud. Uh, well, Huska. Hey, well, I, I, you're pronouncing I don't, my name right, Drew. I, 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 I know yours is tough, Brady. <laughs> it's like right, right. Tom but you nailed Jones. it. You nailed it. But, uh, Brady Smythe. But I, I could have. You know, it's weird how you hear stuff. But I, I, you're. I don't think I've heard your daughter say Huska. But uh, okay. All right. So, so, anyway, go ahead. So, so Randy, uh, any of you that are Teen Mon fans will recognize uh, Andy as Chelsea's dad. And uh, Randy and I have been dealing with that whole operation for 10 years now. And uh, when I put Brady Smith on a podcast, Randy contacted me and said, what about my, what about my charities? What about them? And uh, specifically, let me, let me read what I've got about it. It's the, the New Horizon Dental Center. It's a 501 C3, takes care of those who can't afford private fees, uh, takes insurance, Medicaid, veterans benefits, uh, grants made possible by private individuals and corporations. And what is it you do there at that nonprofit? So I'm on the board of it. Um, and uh, it's an implant training course. So it trains dentists how to do implants. And of course, you need uh, patients. So the New Horizon Dental Center is just a low-cost dental clinic, and through that uh, clinic, they screen the patients, and then they find patients that feed. And it's all in the same building in the same clinic, Implant Pathway is the training program. And uh, so in since 2017, but I think they've, uh, they've done $7 million worth of dental implants and stuff like that, uh, probably 3,500 implants, 800 dentures, so... And, and, and uh, I want I want to reassure people that when when somebody says they're going to a dental training program, they, they're not being ex practiced on in the sense that they're that it's uh, it, the wild west. The, the supervision is always by very high level professionals who are exactly. teachers who um, who are so good that they're the ones that yes. actually teach the process. And so the the kind of services they get, yeah, these are novices working on you, but the actual. It's the, the responsibility is taken by very highly trained people to make sure the outcomes are, are just right. Yeah, the, they've got mentors that come in. Uh, some are oral surgeons. Some are just people who've done thousands of implants and thousands of hours of training. And uh, you know, for there's there's seven sets of two dentists, and each two gets their own mentor. So, you know, and the, it's over the shoulder watching, and it's. It's anything from one implant to uh, extracting all their teeth and placing implants upper and lower and, and dentures. So, and, so and up to fifty, six thousand dollars worth of stuff on a single patient. Wow! And is there any? Do you have to be? For, you're you're in South Dakota, right? North Dakota. I'm South, South Dakota. Dakota. This yeah. this 
South Dakota. This clinic yeah. is in Tempe. Um, it's run by uh, my good friend Justin Moody. Uh, he's one of the premier dental implant dentists in the in the country, and uh, it's 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 just a, it's a crazy crazy great place. I love it. T Tempe, Arizona. Yeah. Oh my goodness! How'd you get involved with this? So I fl well, he's from South Dakota originally. Huh. Got it. Um, so that little connection, but uh, Arizona has a unique uh, thing with licensing where you have a good Samaritan clause, which means you can um, practice dentistry for 14 days as long as you don't charge for it. I, basically, good Samaritan stuff, volunteer. Me, so me that's you why can it makes that you, you can come in from out of state and not have to relicense. Yeah, so you know, a lot of the time for training in uh, dental implants. People would go um, because there's wild, wild west there, you know, not much rules. Where is that? Um, but Where? Then, Where? First of all, you have to have a passport. Oh. Well, either Dominican Republic is a lot of it or New Mexico, that type of stuff. You know, and first you have to get a passport. You have to go out of the country. There's language barriers. And then, and then the other thing is that, you know, so many of them never get their mouth restored. They get a bunch of implants placed, probably pay them 50 bucks or something. And then they're walking around with implants and never get uh, their teeth restored. So this allows Dennis to go to Arizona, get this good Samaritan license, which is easy to get, and not have to leave the country. And then you know that the, the patient will get the final treatment also. Uh, by the way, anyone else, any other physicians out there that want to, want to uh, volunteer in New York, they are allowing, I, I don't know if it's every state in New York, but multiple state licenses to pass for the state of New York for the time being. I'm looking at the uh, COVID situation in South Dakota. Only 68 people have been hospitalized in the state of South Dakota. Not bad. 1,500 cases total. You guys are pretty yeah. good. Yeah. You know, we were doing really good, and then uh, there was a pork processing plant in uh, the largest city in South Dakota, which is Sioux Falls. And uh, I think out of our 1,600 positives, I think they have like 80% are in that one, wow. that one pork processing plant. I, I heard about it. I so, didn't realize it was in South Dakota. That's, that's woof. Yeah. And they closed I it mean, all down, right? Got, they closed that whole factory down, if I read right. Yeah, they did. You know, so here you have, that's why it's so, you know, people complain, you know, our governor won't close down the state or whatever, but. Uh-oh. You have not one you, you froze there. The you froze there right for a second. You froze for a second. Tell me what you were saying again. So in South Dakota, there's they're getting a bad rap because our governor isn't shutting everything down. Mm -hmm. But her in her in right or wrong, I don't know. But her defense is that you know South Dakota is kind of unique in that you have seventy five percent of the counties have like one positive or zero positives. Right. And then you have two counties with all of it. So I guess that her her. Her reasoning was why shut down an entire state for two counties that are, have positives. Right. As long as they're able to isolate. I mean, that's what we're all going to be doing going forward once we get to the lowest point on the curve is we're going to be isolating and focusing and to tracking and that kind of stuff. You guys can already do that, provided the public health feels they have adequate resources to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. so, well, that's interesting. Uh, you know, do you know that I've gotten, uh, by the way, I did not know I'm reading your uh, there's some sort of, uh, what am I looking at? The New Horizons Dental Center. I'm looking at your bio here. I didn't know you had six kids. For my own and uh, stepson, stepdaughter. So I did not know you had four. I thought you had two or three at the most. If I, I... Chelsea, Chelsea's the youngest of all of them. Wow. Are they all staying in the Dakotas? Um, my oldest daughter is in El Paso. Her husband's in the Army, so they move around. And uh, second oldest daughter is in uh, by Panama City Beach. She's a physical ther or occupational therapy assistant, and uh, her husband's a lawyer. Hey, and Brady, how did you get involved with Randy? Oh, we, me and Randy met just a few months ago at a dental conference. I, I mean, I, I have been a Teen Mom fan <laughs> since season one. So uh, I had you, I had so you pegged Randy, for that. I, I, I knew immediately, Brady. I knew I had you pegged. <laughs> listen, I'll tell you this. I'll tell you something right now. I came and visited you a few months, Doctor Drew, and 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 you're great, fantastic. But I, I was starstruck by Randy. So oh, uh, I know. Jesus Christ! So much. No, yeah. no, listen, uh, I, yeah, I, I Randy, me, was nervous, but it was a dental conference about podcasting called the Voices of Dentistry, so you're supposed to bring your podcasting equipment, and Randy was gracious enough to to be a guest on my podcast, and we introduced, I introduced myself to him, and, and uh, 
uh, you know, dropping dropping Dr. Drew's name was super helpful. I think. Oh, good. At least <laughs> it didn't go. It didn't go the wrong way. It, and, and another thing, yeah. Randy doesn't know is um, I was. Oh, uh, my, I'm friendly with Cat Timp, uh, a famous oh, libertarian, yeah. and I was quoting her wrong. She is a huge Chelsea fan, and. When we walked into Chelsea's um, dressing room, Randy was there, and he said, "Hey, Cat Tim, big fan." That was the high point of her life, just so you know. With that, that moment, Randy, that was it. Oh, I, I, I still talk to Cat. That's she's she's a good she's a cool cat. And you actually did her you did her little uh, in, uh, digital show, right? Yeah, yeah. Her uh, what the hell's the name of it? Sincerely, sincerely cat. cat. Sincerely, cat. yep. <laughs> Oh my yeah. goodness! Yeah, that's funny. Yeah, that's where I've been. I've been getting my uh, information on what it's like in in New York City from her. Yeah, you know, just by texting because it's. I mean, we're in the Wild West here. We've been practicing practicing social distancing for 180 years. <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I don't another another bit of Dakota. Uh, trivia. I I know the I've gotten to know the governor of North Dakota and his wife very very well, and they have a huge mental health program going up there. Um, and they're reaching out to the Indian nations and just doing an amazing job around alcoholism. Um, do you do, have you are you familiar with the, that couple? No, I'm not. Mm-hmm. I thought that they were neighbors. That's... They're really they're amazing. They're amazing. So so good for the Dakotas. All right, Randy. Uh, it's good to talk to you. Uh, do you want to take some questions about dental stuff before you go? All right, that's what I want to do. Let's see if I can find stuff for both you guys, and we'll I'll, I'll address. Uh, here we go. This is for F- Tiffany. First for Randy. Uh, Tiffany, go ahead there. Yeah, I'm curious what space this great dental work is happening in. Um, a lot of people are asking, but I'm not. I don't think you guys are seeing the questions as we're posting them on the Facebook. Okay, so hold on, Tiffany. So, Randy, you describe your Tempe first, and then and then Brady, you describe how your organization operates. How? What where, am I where, describing again? I, no, you're gonna. Where, where is your organization? And then Randy will describe how his. I mean, uh, then Brady will describe how his works. So, your yours is where? So ours is in Tempe, Arizona, New Horizon Dental Center, um, and basically it's. Uh, in on uh, five days a week, it's a low cost dental clinic, um, which you know they charge Medicaid type fees, and uh, the the advantage of going there one is you know you get low cost dentistry from great dentists, and two they screen those patients for possible uh, volunteers to get the dental implant treatment. Here's a dental question coming on our restream. Uh, I grind my teeth, but the mouth guards always fall out. Randy. Well, a good one shouldn't fall out. <laughs> you know, they there should be very snug. And then Tiffany, we're going to have Dr. Brady answer your question about his organization. Uh, yeah, Thank so you. Um, the main difference is that what we're trying to accomplish is making uh, thousands of implant centers, you know, basically the doctors that we recruit to be volunteer for our process would be the office where that would take place. So we want to dot the map of the United States with clinics where people can get this work for free. There's some really big struggles that occur with a geographic distance and it makes things not impossible, but it makes things more difficult to to triage a patient and manage their aftercare when they don't live close enough to easily come and see you. So our, our effort at drilled with Dr. Brady or the drilled podcast network is to create a large network of, of dentists so that no matter what city you live in, ideally, uh, we would be able to broker a relationship with a dentist who's be willing to volunteer to help you out. So so Brady's trying to get a, a network that will help you, and then Randy's running an operation in Tempe. Okay? Yep. And, okay. And I originally come from running. California, but I now, it. I now live in Arkansas. Say that, Tiffany, one more time. Yeah, but I now live in Arkansas, and I know the southern states need it really bad. And thank you so much for answering my questions. Check out, Brady, want to refer her to your website, or uh, might that help yeah, her? Dr. Brady. Dot com, and then the Drill with Dr. Brady podcast, we're always talking about what we're doing. Uh, our giveaways are kind of in a shutdown mode right now, except for a few that are, I would consider to be urgent. 
in emergency right. type situations. How, how is dentistry looking at the road back? I mean, obviously there is aerosol splashing and intimate, you know, proximity. Uh, are you going to have to change the kind of gear you guys wear? What 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 is dentistry must be having a conversation about this? They're having conversations, all right. It's there's been there's more infighting now than I've ever seen in my career. Would you agree with that, Randy? So I uh, I'm old. So I, was, I started dentistry back in the day of the HIV crisis. You know, right, right. And, uh, my my class was the first one to come out wearing gloves and masks on every patient and, and universal precautions and all that. And of course, there was no social media back then, so all your infighting was just. Whoop! He froze up again. Right now. Yeah, but so all the fighting back then was just, you know, in your local dental societies. But now with social media, it's just, you know, you got some, you got one side of the, one side of the fence is hazmat suits and negative pressure treatment rooms, which is going to make dentistry impossibly expensive for everybody. Wow. And then the other side is, I ain't changing nothing. <laughs> what? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, I mean, you could always just do testing, right? If you, rather than the, than the, you know, the changing the, the nature of the room, you could just do testing. Well, so one of the issues that I have is that dentistry is generally really safe. Gender, dentistry has always been, has had a tremendously good track record in not spreading infectious diseases, even though we're exposed to infectious diseases frequently. Yeah. yeah. So the idea that we need to change what we're doing should only be triggered by evidence that we are unsafe to continue in the way we are. And I'm not sure that that evidence exists. And if it does, I don't, I haven't seen it, but certainly COVID-19 is something different. It's something new. And I think it's possible to be open, you know, to be worried about the virus, but also, you know, sitting back and waiting for all the evidence to come in before we start, you know, outfitting negative pressure rooms into our offices i that just infers that dentistry isn't safe i think that's not a good thing to put out there yeah i i and and by the way no matter what you if you if you engage if you deploy all that technology and change and then we get a vaccine it becomes unnecessary unless we have another pandemic right Mm -hmm. yep. And the logistics of, I mean, you go from a dental office where you're seeing, you got two hygienists, they're seeing 10 to 12 patients a day, you have the dentist seeing, you know, you have 40 people running through pre, pre-COVID-19. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I don't know how, how that could, if you have to change that, it's just going to, it's just going to change everything for us. Mm -hmm. Let's start with uh, Aaron with a question for Brady. Go ahead there, Aaron. Uh-oh, Aaron. Me? Oh oh, right, that's you. Yep. Holy Okay. Uh, wait, no, I have a question for you, Dr. Do. Okay, go ahead. Um, so, first of all, I want to say I watch your podcast with Tom Segura, and I kind of want to disinfect Annie with you. Do what? And Talk about Annie? I want to disinfect Annie. Yeah. Annie that's is Annie. Exciting. This this is a this is a little off dental <laughs> and also, topic. Um, go ahead. Pardon? Go ahead. And also, um, on the same podcast, um, you were talking about the pig guy, and he's actually like four hours away from me, which is exciting. He's in the same province as me. Oh, in Cal so in Cal thinking, Calgary. Oh, is you it? could do like a duo video. Is up in Calgary is where he is. Why don't you uh, do me a favor? Yeah, you can. He's in Calgary, and I'm in I'm near Edmonton. So Aaron, it's about four hours. We're, we're going to be taking calls for that show at about 11 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, and I know Tom would love to talk. Oh my. Yeah, I love. Okay. I know love. Tom would love to talk more about this. Actually, am I right that Tom's in there tomorrow, Susan? Do you know? Do you know the number? Uh, I don't know. You might. You might have to go to like. Yeah. Go to after, Drew After Dark on Twitter, and then the phone number should be there, right? Yeah, I think that'll be there. Or on the Instagram. She also, uh, Dr. Brady, says that she had re she's 25 years of age and has receding gums, is what she's calling. What do you make of that? Oh, well, there's a lot of, you know, receding gums can be a uh, 
evidence of pathology and it sometimes isn't evidence of pathology so it really requires a little bit more of a consult which is again that's the recommendation you should go seek out some dental a, 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 you know consult with a dentist who can identify the reasons and the symptoms the, the why that's a bad thing is that likely to continue can you stop it from having gums gums are the foundation upon which teeth are secured so you lose gums and you lose bone you lose bone your teeth get loose and you lose your teeth and your life is different is there anything people should be doing beyond proper brushing to reduce that risk seeing the dentist as frequently as possible you need a it's more than just brushing and flossing you need someone who understands the disease process from start to finish and can identify the signs of deterioration and can help you break that cycle because oftentimes pain is not a factor here so you can be you can have severe periodontal disease and not have any pain necessarily associated with it so it's shocking when people hear you have gum disease and they don't feel it they don't they don't think they do because they don't feel bad at all randy you want to add to any of that uh receding gums lots of times uh you know that's going to be associated with some clenching and grinding oddly enough mm -hmm. um sleep disorders stuff like mm -hmm. that things that people don't think of when they think of dentistry uh, yeah I've, I've had calls from dentists over the years that have been very helpful where the you know it's just like dermatologists often can read medical illness in the skin Dentists are really good at picking up stuff that is not right. Even if it's just to say the gum, something's wrong. I just know something's wrong with this patient. I can't tell you specifically. Sure. I've, I've never had a dentist call. I lost you. I, Dr. Brady, did you lose me too? No. For a second, you're back now. Okay, I was just saying that, okay. that I've, I've had calls from dentists over the years where they'll say something the order of uh, something medically is going on. I can't even tell you what. I just know something's not right. And that has never been wrong. That's always been extremely useful information when dentists call me like that. Yeah, yeah it's, it's all connected. I have a question. I just think people have a big fear of dentists already, but this is going to change everything. Like, when are we supposed to go back in? When are we supposed to get our teeth cleaned? How are we going to, you know, deal with a bad tooth And if we're too afraid to go to the dentist? This is what I'm, I'm terrified of this. Because the idea that even dentistry, the dental professionals are not unified on this front. Uh, you, like, like Randy mentioned, you have people who want full-on hazmat suits, and you got people who are going to refuse to change anything. And there's, and, and so, but the idea of changing things does infer that things are not safe the way that they are. I take issue with that. I think dentistry of all medical professions has a really good track record. You'd, have, you'd be hard-pressed to name infectious disease that is being spread through dental offices. It just isn't something you might, you'd be hard-pressed to find even anecdotal evidence of that let alone hmm. real scientific evidence that shows that. So right now, I'm, le I'm leaning on that as a dentist. I don't want my patients to be afraid to come see me, obviously. And I don't have any evidence that suggests that they should be. And I don't have any, so, so I am hoping that we can, and one of the reasons I, I definitely wanted to come on here and use this platform was to hopefully present that as, there's no evidence to be afraid to see the to see the dentist in this coronavirus outbreak pandemic that we're all going through. Uh, we've been identified as high risk by like surveys and really non-scientific type of articles that are going around the internet right now, and that's freaking a lot of people out. But there's no evidence that suggests that we're passing or passing around infectious diseases. Are you making a recommendation as to when things should get back, or like when they when they say whatever your state policies end up being and they lighten up the quarantine, should dentistry re be an initial part of that, Randy? So, I, you know, we get our guidance from the American Dental Association or whatever, and they're, they're saying, use your best judgment. So that helps. Um, but 
I did a informal survey on Twitter the other day of uh, just, uh, you know, when when this is all over and calm down, you know, are you are are you people going to be scared of going to the dentist? Are you going to be very worried or not at all? And uh, I think it was 76 percent was uh, out of 20,000 or whatever was uh, not worried. You know, ready to roll. So. I don't know. I, I, I worry know, more I'm, about, I, frankly, I worry more about you guys and your staff than I do about sure. um, the patients getting exposed to something. I mean, it, I, I, that, that seems more. Yeah, a, yeah, a, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and, it'd, and be hard it, to take, it'd be hard to pass something from one patient to another. How, yeah. I can't even. Do, but uh, cert, certainly my staff is my team, and my team's very important to me. So I. Uh, I will take whatever measures I need to protect them, but uh, I think we have to be within reason. I just wonder if tuberculosis might not be a model for how to approach this, because I'm certain dentistry has had to protect itself from TB forever. Uh, and I, I don't know what you specifically have done for that, but, but that seems like, I mean, only about, if I remember right, about 30% of TB patients actually aerosolize, but you can't predict who that 30% is, and so you have to protect against aerosols. And certainly in county TB, hospitals. And st- Go ahead, Randy. Yeah. TB, hepatitis, HIV. I mean, yeah, we just treat every patient like they've got everything under the sun and protect ourselves and protect them. Well, I, it's, it's funny. It, so it's the American Dental Association. See, in our world, the American Medical Association doesn't really do as much as our specific professional societies because everyone's broken down into different subspecialties. And we get our guidance from subspecialty organizations. Is that work in dentistry too? Yeah, the ADA is not uh, a regulatory agency. Yeah, the, A- yeah. the ADA is not authority. Uh, in fact, this is another area where dentists are going to be split. Uh, some dentists are, are are rapidly anti-ADA, and they don't feel like they contribute very much. They don't fight for us. They don't. They don't do. They, there's a lot of dentists who feel that way, and some dentists are due paying members and they're ride or die for the ADA. So there's a lot of split split on there, but they're not a regu- they don't claim to be a regulatory agency and they are not a regulatory agency. Even their light recommendations, they're not they're not taking a stance, which is right. disappointing. They they are being very neutral, very politically yeah. correct. Yeah, use your best to ju- use your best judgment to me sounds like a cop out frankly. Uh, if one, it, it'd be one thing for them to say, "Hey, we're we're studying it. We haven't arrived at it yet. We're going to try to reach a consensus with the, you know, infectious disease community, or who, who knows what." I mean, they should be consulting all over the place, and then provide some. They don't have to take a position, and they can still provide best practices, right? Exactly. There's no reason for them to alienate half of the profession. Crazy. Well, gentlemen, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for all your hard work and your charitable uh, contributions. And Randy, I guess, I guess you and I will be together in the summer sometime. I suspect. Is that right? Yeah, I, you're hearing? I, I missed the last. I missed the last one. Uh, actually, I was down doing surgery in Arizona. That's why I couldn't go. I, and, uh, and when you're not there, trust me, it's not the same for me. Uh, I, although it, that was a really interesting experience. That one, if I remember right. So, oh, yeah, um, and it's been, uh, a, it's been a weird run. And, and by the way, uh, the 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 last time I I was with Chelsea, her um, her command of her mental health issues and her ability to share that and make a difference for other people was really inspiring. I was so delighted for her. Uh, I know she. I've recommended that book that she loves so much that uh, about panic and anxiety called Dare by a guy named McCullough, if I remember right. And uh, but she was just she's just so great. It really was just I mean, uh, I, you know, I've been I've been watching this road with you the last 10 years and it's just phenomenal where she is now. Yeah, she was, you know, she was hesitant to to put that on the show, um, but she really thought that she could probably help some people by doing she it. Absolutely did. Absolutely did. She shouldn't. It's That's common so, stuff. Yeah. I've got the same material. I got. I had the same thing at her age. She shouldn't be. A, she shouldn't sure. hesitate to talk about it anymore. Whether you talk no. about dental caries or anything else, it's just, just one of these things. Yeah, and Brady, I know you're a big fan of Chelsea's because you're a fan of the show, right? Oh my gosh! <laughs> I am not even joking. You, me, and my wife don't agree on a lot of TV shows, but Team Mom has unified our marriage. 
and I probably owe I, I probably owe a debt of gratitude to Randy that he doesn't even know about. But yes, well. huge fan of Chelsea and Randy and uh, uh, the whole show and your involvement. And uh, if you want to invite me to sit in the sideline at that reunion, I'd be happy to accept that. Uh, okay, we got to get Brady into. <laughs> we got to bring Brady into the audience, Randy. Bring him. Bring so him. Here. Here. No purpose. Uh, I'll enjoy it. Uh, that'll be great. That'll be great. Uh, okay. Uh, see you guys soon enough, Randy. Thank you. Uh, get, Thanks, let's Drew. let's let's restate the organizations. Uh, Randy, Randy, yours. New Horizon Dental Center, Tampa. And then Brady. Yeah, mine's the, drill, the drilledwithdrbrady.com is the easiest way to get involved with us. Is going to our website, drilledwithdrbrady.com. The name of the organization is the Drilled Podcast Network. And you can subscribe to our podcast uh, anywhere you get podcasts. Beautiful. I'll see you guys no doubt soon. And we're going to take a little break. I'll be right back. My cats will be here in about 15 minutes or so. We've all been very focused on Thank how you. to stay healthy these days, but uh, we've not been talking about hydration. If you get coronavirus, flu, or even experience allergies, cold, a variety of everyday ailments, they all need hydration. And that's why it's a perfect time to welcome our friends at Hydrolyte back. This is a great product. You all know I've talked about it for a long time. This was the hydration product I wanted to invent, and they got it there before me. Now, remember, dehydration can make you feel sick, even a slight amount, and none of us need that anxiety right now. So stay well hydrated. I am thrilled to welcome our good friends at Hydrolyte back to the show. Longtime fans remember my obsession with Hydrolyte, which is literally the best hydration product I have found. I'm even more excited to introduce their brand new single serve powder sticks. Simply pour one powder stick into a glass of water. They recommend seven ounces. The powder dissolves instantly and creates the perfect balance of sodium, glucose, and water to deliver up to four times the electrolytes of your typical sports drink. And think about it. You can take this anywhere. You should have it on hand to just pour it into water and you have a real significant hydration product. The other great news about Hydrolyte, the powder sticks, they are 100% natural, no sure. artificial flavors, colors or sweeteners, and they are available in flavors like orange and lemonade and they taste great. Hydration is crucial. Hydrolyte is the fastest and easiest way to stay ahead of it. And you can find Hydrolyte powder sticks in the digestive aisle at Walgreens or Amazon, or simply just go to my website, drdrew.com slash hydrolyte. Again, that is drdrew.com slash H-Y-D-R-A-L-Y-T-E. You see it spelled here. There it is. And you enter the code drdrew18 to save 30% off your order. Forget the runs on toilet paper. There should be runs on this. This is doing much more for your health than toilet paper. So go get some, have it on hand. If anybody in your family gets sick, you need to keep them hydrated. And that's how you do it. All right, we are back. Mike Catherine's going to join me in a few more minutes. Uh, let's get to it here. Uh, I want to answer your questions. I'll give a little update on COVID-19 as well. So go ahead there, Kim. Oh, hi. Um, my name is Kim. I'm actually a registered nurse. I haven't been practicing for a couple of years now. I took off to take care of my children. Cool. But I was concerned about um, someone uh, told me, I helped my uncle uh, for a few hours at a gas station and he came into the gas station and told me that he had the virus and that he told me that you can be reinfected. And back in November, I thought I had the flu or it was December actually. And, um, how can you get re uh, reinfected? Yeah. Okay. So it's, it's a little bit complicated, Kim, because it's, as you know, a brand new virus and we're trying to learn about it. The presumption is, and the overwhelming probability is, that once you've had it, you're probably immune for about a year. Okay? Now, there are ways... Yeah, I that, was really sick. Well, we don't know if you had it or not. you got to get an antibody test to see right. if that's and what it was. I was just going to say, can they do a titer? I'm, I'm just wondering why they just don't do a titer test or something. They do. To see they if can. I have the antibody. They, they can. Oh, it's expensive, okay. and it's not. You know, it's, they, they're looking for something to scale up, and they've got these five-minute tests that they're hoping they can scale up, but they're not that accurate. That's what they're struggling with right now. So a, t a titer... The tighter test is expensive. See, I thought it wasn't. I thought it was well, a cheaper option. And, but hold on. The, the you know, tighter going test, to waste the test. 
Well, the titer test also, you have to make, you know, if you really want to be sure you're immune, you have to do a special test that, that determines whether your titer can neutralize virus. It's a very specialized uh, test. You okay. almost have to go to an infectious disease doctor to get it. But that that's sort of what they're doing now to, to like for people that return to the hospitals to work, their preference is right. to make sure they have neutral, what called neutralizing antibodies. So you can do the rapid test, which is not very accurate, but not so expensive. You can get your blood drawn and get the viral titers and they can the new, and then get the neutralizing test as well. But uh you know, bottom line is we still don't know for sure what you get, what you had, and uh, it might be worthwhile just to get a rapid test because at least if you turn up some positive, you can relax a little bit. Uh, and this is a similar, this is a follow-on to that. Bobby, you had more questions about the testing, right? Yes, I was wondering about uh, how many people should get tested and if I'm showing mild symptoms, if I need to waste the doctor's time by trying to get tested. Right. So where where are you? I'm in New Mexico in the Four Corners. Um, there's a large outbreak in the Navajo community. I'm, I'm aware of um, that. I'm aware of that. Uh, and I work at a uh, Pizza Hut. So Okay, so here's the deal. Um, in- the testing at this point is really highly uh, dependent on where you are. Uh, in Los Angeles County, they... They they turned it around completely last week. Have a website that's really easy to use. You sign up, you make an appointment, you drive through. Everybody gets tested. Now they're asking it to be people that have symptoms, but Bobby, even you would get tested. Even mild symptoms would get tested. I had heard that something similar was going on in New Mexico. So that's lucky for you. There should be available testing for you without having to see a doctor. You can usually sign up for it online. Okay. I, I don't know for sure. Again, that's what we do. Los Angeles County now, for me, has become the, the prototype. They're the model for the rest of the country. The, again, this is not something the federal government's going to solve. The federal government's going to give guidelines, but it's going to be your local county public health that's going to take care of this. Okay? Okay, I'll look into that. Um, and as far as drive-up testing, uh, a lot of the homeless community and the person like myself, I'm, I just don't drive. I walk everywhere. Mm. Um, is there a possibility for me to do walk-up testing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the drive-up is just for convenience sake. But, yes, I'm sure. That they may ask for you to put on okay. some... They may ask you to put on some protective gear, most of which you should be on anyway if you're walking about. So, very, very good. Uh, hmm. Let's see. And, by the way, when the question embedded in Bobby's question there is when will we have mass testing? I... I we got to get on it. I was hoping it would have been this week. Uh, we need mass testing. The, gov- the federal government may, may guide the antibody testing because they've got the FDA has got to decide which test we use. Got to scale it up. Got to put it in production. We have to do. We have to do it right now. In terms of the viral testing, that's the stuff Bobby and I were talking about, and that's more of a local issue. Uh, Max, what's going on? Hey there. I was just checking in. I it's, I'm calling about bipolar. I mean, I just turned 30. Um, I'm having a lot more anxiety. I'm usually unmedicated. I've kept it well together for a couple of years. I have a successful business. I recently quit nicotine, and now all my emotions are like anxious, high strung, a little bit extra. And uh, I don't know, the coronavirus isn't Not helping too much I'm either. Sure. I'm sure. Um, so, so hang on. So, so <laughs> you know, anxiety can go either direction in bipolar, right? You could be anxious because you're starting to go hypomanic. You could also be anxious. Some people in their depressions, they manifest their sort of an agitated anxiety state. So how do you feel mood-wise? I think it's an excited. Um, can I sum, sum it up to like a Burt Kreischer type of energy? Got it. Um, Got it. Just, you know. Just super came, stoked. Came, came yeah. right into focus. Uh, Bax, well done. <laughs> right. <laughs> Got it. And do you have a lot of the obsessing and OCD stuff that he has too? Um, Somewhat, but my thing is more oriented on my um, work. Okay. So I own a small business, and that's become kind of my hyper focus. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I get a little bit wound up, a little excited with Got customers. Nothing it. negative, but it's just... I understand. Yeah. I understand. So, do you take a mood stabilizer? I used to take gabapentin and Depakote um, when I was in my early twenties. Yeah. But that just made me really numb, and I had opted um, out of that. 
Okay. And then so here, they had me I, on Lamictal, which was a nice, uh, yeah. Well, did you go go off Lamictal? You're still on it. No, I went off it um, after 26. I fell off my parents' insurance and kind of, oh. to be honest, I just kind of had to. I learned to live with it. Okay. And so, so, so let me let it. me suggest. Yeah. You know, bipolar is highly biological, right? Highly genetic, highly biological, and you kind of have two options. Um, you could go back on Lamictal if that worked for you. And that's a pretty simple medicine. It's, you know, I, you know, you remember how you had to build it up over time and it's, uh, it's kind of hard to dose, but <laughs> it's very effective. And the, 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 adverse effect is rash, which you did not have. So that's good. But, but the gabapentin is actually very good for anxiety. So I wonder if you could, a simple move would be maybe to contact the doctor that was prescribing that gabapentin and just kind of refill that and see if that doesn't take the edge off for you. You think? Um, would I start back out at the 800 milligram dose, or do you think they would like ease me into that? I would think they would ease you in. I, I would think they would give you a hundred or okay. three hundred and say, you know, use this carefully and stuff. Because you're, you're you're you sound fine, but as you know, you got to be careful. You can you can spin, you can go, and um, the the oh, most definitely, um, yeah. Yeah. So good. I mean, you know your illness. You're good for you. You're working out. Good for you, man. It, it, it'll it'll be okay. It'll be okay. But you do sometimes have to do something uh, of a biological intervention for this condition, particularly when you're younger. And by the way, the more manic the episodes you have, the more you're prone to them going on through your life. So you do want to kind of suppress them. Uh, Lola, go ahead there. Hi. Good evening or good afternoon. Yes, I had a question. I had gastric sleeve almost two years ago and I'm concerned with my teeth starting to look like they're not healthy anymore. Yeah. Um, not that they were in the greatest shape before, but they kind of seem like they might be eroding. Yeah. So that makes me worry that, you know, get, people get these gastric bypass and sleeves and things. And I have seen horrible problems with reflux where the gastric content comes up. You're not even aware of it, but when you sleep at night, it just drifts up into your mouth and all that acid gets into your mouth and can erode your teeth. So very important that you talk to somebody about maybe the fact that this is that this is a reflux from the sleeve. So your surgeon needs to be contacted about that. And then you've got to see a dentist about, uh, about helping your teeth, okay? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. I think people know that like if you're bulimic, you're gonna ruin your teeth. The same thing is true of gastric bypass. The one and only Mike Catherwood joins me. Somewhere in there. There he is. What's going on, buddy? Whoa, whoa, whoa. There you are. There you go. Go can you hear me, though? Go Dodgers. I hear I, you. I can see you got video, but... No, we, no, I hear we you. We can hear you. I hear you. You're loud and clear. Fantastic. So Fantastic. are you Are you, Are you? you mourning the Dodger season? Are you celebrating? What, what, do we, what do we got here with the Dodger hat? I'm mourning, I'm mourning the Lakers season. I mean, the Dodger season never got started, so it was like, it was a little easier to deal with. It's not, it, like the Lakers season was like a really bad breakup with a chick that you love the dodger season it's like i never the chick never paid attention to me you, know? <laughs> you never you never got the first date right exactly how are you guys doing in this uh quarantine it's hard to say i mean good good compared to honestly probably compared to the rest of the world i i'm super fortunate my wife and i and my daughter we're, we're very fortunate we have um amazing weather and we live in a place where we have really easy access to a lot of like outdoor getaways. Mm. Um, and, you know, I don't know how to put it without sounding tacky, but like we're, we're lucky to have some resources, financial, you know, stability to kind of weather the storm a little bit. Um, and I, I happen to work in an industry where like I can do most of my work from home anyway. So all in all, we're really, really lucky compared Great. to a lot of Americans. And last time I saw you, we were on uh, the fighter and the kid together, and yeah, then you did, and then you man. did. Then I invited you, and then you did it again, and didn't invite me. Well, that's not fair. Uh, uh, that's not uh, fair. Uh, that's uh, not a fair. <laughs> what do you mean it's not, not fair? fair. Uh, You're right. It's not fair. Not you invited all... yourself the first time. You're right. Wait a second. That's not at all an accurate um, portrayal of what went on. Okay. What happened was, see, what happened was. What happened was. Brendan, Brendan Schaub and Brian invited you to be on the podcast. Right. Then they reached out to me, not, uh, not yeah. vice versa. They reached out okay. to me and said, hey, are you free? I know you live down the block. Or are you free to come on the show? Dr. Drew is the guest. We would love Got to have it. you both. 
Got then it. I texted you. I didn't pull a dick move. I texted you. I said, would it be cool if I came on, too? They're asking me. Yeah, you, you invited said, yourself. Yeah, yeah. You invited, I get it. You invited yourself. It was cool. It, it, it was cool. You did invite yourself. That's right. Well, so, then they invited me so. back, and they didn't invite you back. So then we do <laughs> how was the, how was the next visit? It was great. Those guys are great. I mean, Brendan. Yeah. There's a reason why the fighter and the kid has had such like a meteoric rise. Brian's in, insanely smart. He loves to pretend like he's the smartest guy on the planet, but he's not far off. I mean, he's a really well read, really funny guy. And Brendan's such a, like a he's like everyone's everyone should have like a like a Brendan as like a Tyler Durden because he is that ambitious and driven and disciplined, and he's just like beautiful and buff and like you know he he's a go i mean the guy the guy took he transferred from one of the most difficult if not the most difficult athletic endeavor possible into the most difficult endeavor in the entertainment industry possible and he's succeeded at both i mean it's it's really really fantastic and they're both really li likable dudes and it's uh, it's always a great experience and, and we've known I, them for I let them know i exposed them they were not aware dr drew hmm. of demi moore's bush I'm so happy for them that you, you that you helped them out that way, but but you introduced me to them like ten years ago. Yeah, yeah, Didn't, yeah. we first got to meet them. Yeah, I, I, I think I think exclusively before mutually. Like I think I was like, hey, there's this comic guy Brian. He's a good actor too, and he's really funny. I see him around Venice. We should have him on the show. Yes. And then Brendan, after he retired from the UFC, he I was like, hey, there's this guy. He's a fighter, former fighter. He's getting in stand up and podcasting and stuff. We should have him on. It's fun. Then we then they got together and we started having them both on and it's just been it's been like chocolate and peanut butter ever since. I had forgotten that. That's really interesting that you you kind of picked them both out of the out of the out of the bag, so to speak. All right, I'm looking at our restream really quick here to see what uh, uh, there's a little bit of Rudy talk going on here, man. I can get him, I guess. I, I guess, woo, hold on a second. There's a giant question here. Recommendations for vitamin E. Yeah, oh my goodness. I, I'm in favor of vitamin E. Are you doing any hey. special supplements? Yeah. Are you doing any special supplements? I, I, you know, I really, I, I'm, not a, I'm not a big supplement guy, as you know. Like, there's some staples that I really believe in, and I'm, a, I'm like an evangelist for them. Yeah. Um, creatine. Creatine monohydrate. Um, um, which I, how much, how, now, what's the dose you recommend for that? Because I take creatine every day. How much? I, I like to take five grams a day split into two. Five grams? Two and a half. That's a lot. Grams. I think I take one it's gram. It's really not. They used to, back in the 90s when creatine first hit the market, there was loading phases that would go on for, you know, five to seven days that were like 20, 20 plus grams. And, and what is the, and, uh, what is the uh, benefit? Well, I, I, I've seen the science. The science seems to show that the, 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 P, the, the, the like optimum amount is five grams. But there's also some science that shows that it, it's better absorbed and better utilized if it's split up into two dosages. So I do two, but, two and a half grams. And, and, and the benefits being? Um, well, the benefits, the obvious ones that most people know about is, is um, you know, it fuels your ATP system. You actually get, it's like a nitrous oxide tank for your, for your engine, um, but for your muscular, musculoskeletal system. You get a couple more reps. You really do. You get a good five, ten, up to like 5% more overall strength. Wasn't you get, there, you know, you can crank out two or three more reps, but the new stuff, the really fascinating stuff is the cognitive benefits. Right. That's what I was interested in, that it, that helps sustain, as people age, the sort of cognitive states. And that's in those yeah, same and, doses. And for, and for the for the young brain, yes, it's for the, the five gram dose. And for the yeah. young brain, too, even for the non-declining um, brain, it shows, like, there's ample and kind of conclusive scientific proof that it improves memory and, and, and um, your, yeah. your ability to kind of... Uh, function cognitively um and uh you know with with the cognitive stuff it's always hard I, I i would imagine you'd know a lot better than i do that um those studies can oftentimes it's kind of anecdotal like how do you yeah, know it, someone's hard. memories better right you know it's what I'm hard saying? like yeah that's those are hard studies to do uh vitamin d in this uh covid yeah. era yep yeah. how that's much you take one. but i've been using i've been mega dosing vitamin d for um for years uh, fair enough way before the covid stuff i it's one of those things like I got blood work done about five years ago and a doctor's like, N don't waste your money on everything else. Get yourself some vitamin D, some good omega-3s, and, yeah. and and maybe a multivitamin if you feel like you need it. But if you eat a lot of veggies and stuff, I, I think you're good. I talked to Kate Shanahan about fish oils, and she, she is a, a little dicey on that. She, she uh, was yeah. saying that the, the current 
available products tend to decay and become the sort of bad fats over time. Yeah. Made, made me a little I, nervous. I agree with that. I, I don't know that as a fact, but I've seen like the signs around that. Yeah. I, um, I try to, I try to protect myself against that. I buy super high quality molecularly distilled omega threes, oftentimes krill oil. Cause it seems to be more resistant to that. And then mm -hmm. I keep it in the fridge. That's another little tip that keep, makes it prevents it from going rancid a lot quicker. Where, what do you, what, I mean, a lot what, what product do you use? I use uh, nature's na nature something, but it's an omega three, mega omega three with um, axazanthin and uh, olive leaf extract combined. Also with a little bit of iodine from sea vegetables, which uh, has also been proven to be pretty helpful to your met metabolism. How about K two? Any opinion about that? I, I I've seen that vitamin D's can kind of be useless without it. Like they there's there's a synergistic effect, and most of the really expensive vitamin D has K2 in it. So I just kind of killed two birds with one stone on that one. And, uh, and then going back to supplements for COVID zinc. I, like I said, I've always taken, cause I'm a dude and I've always seen a lot of science that it's great for prostate health and, and, uh, for keeping your hormone profile together, you know, with mm -hmm. the testosterone and stuff. So I've always taken, um, a bunch of zinc and magnesium before bed. How much zinc? That's it. Um, I don't know off the top of my head. I, I could Google search it, but uh, like I, I take a, Z, a ZMA product, which is zinc, magnesium, aspartate. Somebody's asking about Nordic Naturals. That, that's what I take. Yeah, that's. A, I mean, that's a really reputable company. I, I, yeah. I'm pretty sure you could recommend that without going wrong. Uh, and Jay says, I on heard it, you... On it makes a great krill oil, like a really great krill oil. And the good thing about krill oil is you, have to take, you can take a lot less because it's much more pure. Uh, let's but see what else. it's shit crazy oh. expensive. I am going to bring a couple scientists on here to talk about NAD. Uh, I'm I am persuaded that NAD is something we should be paying attention to, uh, and uh, N acetylcysteine is another thing that might have some benefit in this uh, COVID era. But you know, nutrition, sleep, exercise, all that stuff, obviously optimal. If you get exposed to the virus, you're going to get it. You're going to get it. Right. Uh, the question is, you know, can you do anything to adjust how it how it affects you? And we just don't know that. These are all sort of things that might benefit. Uh, but I, I'm going to talk. The there's something called nicotinic uh, nicotinamide riboside, and just nicotinamide generally that might be of some benefit here. And uh, I, and I was persuaded that they have significant anti aging effects. I, I got persuaded on on nicotine riboside quite some time ago. I've seen NAD work in reversing, uh, particularly alcohol withdrawal and alcoholic liver disease. So I, I think it's a good time to revisit uh, NAD. So we'll see, we'll see what the scientists have to say about that. Yeah, I'm interested in it too because I've seen so many of my like biohacker and anti-aging friends that are really big on the NAD. I'm curious, is it something that you can get the same benefits from orally as you can? Because most of these well, guys are doing the the injections, you, right? The you can't. IV. No, that's why the the only uh, as my understanding, if if my understanding is correct, it's the nicotinamide riboside that's the oral form. That's how you get to the NAD uh, production. But we'll, we'll, I'm going to get more into that science. With, um, Susan, when do those scientists come in? Do we know approximately? Hopefully so, next week. Next week. Okay, so we'll stay tuned for that. I'll also put them on the Dr. Drew podcast. I think they may be uh, They may be interested in showing some new they research. Maybe take it today. Yeah, I made Susan take it because there's some new research <laughs> that shows it may have some um, antiviral properties or uh, prophylactic properties. So I'm looking for anything that has any prophylactic sort of science behind it. So just to summarize, vitamin D, vitamin C, do you take C? I don't, but I eat. <coughs> I've seen some pretty compelling science that it's much better to get your vitamin C from food sources than it is to supplement with it. Um, and it's one of those things, unlike vitamin D, that you can pretty easily get from food. I mean, I eat an orange a day. I eat a couple carrots a day. It's not that hard. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't feel like I need it. Here's a comment from yeah. Dustin. He's going back to the COVID. He said, is, is using treatment of hydroxychloroquine, z and zinc before symptoms get too bad, having success that doctors are reporting? Saw a study of 700 patients in NYC. Only two didn't come off ventilators. Um, it, it, it's still a mixed bag. Uh, I just recently, I had uh, two very, very ill COVID patients. One seemed to benefit from the hydroxychloroquine and the other progressed. So it's hard to tell. Okay, very hard to tell. Um, when it matter, though, kind of what condition they're in? Yes, with? yes. But but both were not far off one another. One, one was male, the one that didn't do so well. Mm -hmm. 
the, and the male had more of the cardiovascular type stuff that's associated with complications. So there's that. Uh, people are asking about the N-acetylcysteine. You want to comment about that? I just don't know enough about it. I have seen a lot of, there's a lot of buzz around it, but I, I, I don't feel it's appropriate for me to even comment yay or nay because I just don't know that. About yeah, it. I feel the same way. I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out. Um, it, it's something we used to use for uh, reversing Tylenol overdoses, for instance. It's also been used to thin secretions in people with certain lung problems. But um, using it as an antiviral, that's, that's new to me, and I, and I need more information. I, I'm, I'm not yet persuaded. Uh, so, a lot of, again, a lot of Rudy questions. Um, let me see. I guess I had to talk to Rudy about what's going on with um, the COVID for him, right? Should I go get him? Yeah, go get him. Okay. Uh, so, Rudy is uh, Mike's friend, and... Um, Rudy, no, Werewolf says study out of France said no difference. Well, there are multiple studies out of France uh, that show both really, really high high effect and really, really limited effect. And you asked about the cardiovascular stuff. Uh, oh, there's his daughter. <laughs> uh, hypertension is the number one risk factor from a cardiovascular standpoint. But any other vascular pathology, heart disease, heart even arrhythmias, things like that, all those cardiovascular, uh, cerebrovascular phenomenon are things that uh, seem to add risk to um, male patients, particularly with uh, coronavirus. I don't know what he was doing. He's building something. I think Magnolia came in. I heard her. She was. Um, she she sounds like a young adult. <laughs> she's loquacious. She's quite loquacious. Uh, zombie is just glassing. I appreciate that. You're probably uh, feathering it, too, while you're at it. Tell people um, where they can call. Right now, you can call. 984. Uh, 984. Two, two, Doctor Drew. Nine eight four two, Doctor Drew. We'll get or you on. Or two three the, on the seven three seven three nine. Um, nine eight four two three seven three seven three nine. I was purposely infected in two thousand seven. Caddy says, hmm, interesting. <laughs> I want to get on. I also want to get on the uh, vaccine protocols. You know, I'm. I'm so, I, I have to get my shingle shot. I really. What's up, fool? Hey, hey Rudy, what's going on, man? Wait, wait, there hey, you are. Dog, what's happening? Uh, hey, buddy. So, how are you staying well in this quarantine? What are you doing? Oh, uh, you know, like um, I'm taking like uh, mira, like precautions and doing mm -hmm. everything I can. I mix um, I mix a lot of like Western modern science with a lot of like traditional Mexican um, holistic science. You know, are, are, is a and sad. Wait, well, hold on, is is sad girl taking some of that stuff too, or? Is well, uh, or sure, she doc, or, I provided for her. Is she? Is, these aren't her ideas. These are your ideas. No, they're, they're my my grandma's. My abuelita. She's been like she kind of like um a, like a medicine woman, you know, like a like right. a good witch. How's she doing now? My grandma. Yeah, she was uh, not talking last time I spoke with you. Well, that she's fine overall. She's good. Last time, she she was in a coma. Because I hotboxed the room she was in. Yeah. And she's 114 years old. So yeah. um, her lungs can't process modern chronic. And she, she died for a couple of days. And okay. but she came back. You know, it's so like Mira, like zombie style. She's good. She, but she's a good you know? witch. She's a good witch. She's a good, my grandma's a good witch. Boy. Yeah. And so last time I talked to you, it, it, she used to use a lot of avocado, as I recall, in her, in her potion. La, avocado is great. Like, um, mash it up and put it underneath your feet for a good 20 minutes. It pulls out the impurities. I see. You mix it with, with um, dog fur, dog fur and witch hazel. And you make a nice, like, uh, soup. And you put your feet in. And then, you know, it's, it's very good. And I've been eating a lot of um, caca. Caca? You've been eating caca? That's right. Well, because, you know, mira, dogs have antiseptic mouth from right. eating shit. They like to lick butt and eat <laughs> eat poo poo. And so my grandma has encouraged me to lick butt, which I my wife enjoys. <laughs> and then I get uh, protected from the diseases and viruses in my mouth because... There's caca particles. At times, they linger, you know. <laughs> right, right. Especially with my mustache, you know, my mustache will catch things like a, yeah. like mira, like a filter. Mm. It, it it will filter out the caca or what? What is it? I thought yeah, you were getting. Yeah, but then like it stay. It, no, they just uh, like.
like well, it's continue nice exp- it's like drip. continue it's like an IV nice drip. yeah it's like right, an like IV nice drip. and then like 20 minutes later when I'm in need of more caca there's a, a nice little nugget or particle right here on my on my brush up and I can just I can just like this look mira mira look through mira yeah 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 I mira I mira I mira yeah and so um he do me a favor um uh, People were uh, bringing up on the restream, uh, Rudy, and uh, the universal way of describing, um, well, wh- where where some of the uh, descriptors came from uh, that, you know, Rudy's explained to me, like when you see something that, um, you know, uh, that happened, like you see a crime or something go oh, on. And, yeah. Oh, well, um, a lot of us in the barrio... I mean, I don't know how it is in every hood, but in my hood, you know, the the big word we're taught in, you know, like GED class or whatever is is mm-hmm. basically, basically. And whenever you're whenever you're talking to someone who is smart or perhaps a white person, um, you like to you like to pepper in basically, you know, because it's. Well, give, give me an example. Happy. Like, let's say, let's say, Rudy, I'm I'm interviewing you. Uh, we just there was a crime. Uh, someone just ran out of the store with uh, twelve rolls of toilet paper. Mr. Cisneros, what happened? Uh, um, well, like basically, um, this bottle was he came running, you know, and I didn't know what was happening. But basically, he had like four, like four cartons of the 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 ass paper, and basically, like he he was out full. He was on a little girl's bike, and basically, like pedaling crazy, like Forrest Gump. He was. There you go. Basically. And, and, and on, on Restream, I'm noticing they want to make sure you, too, have enough toilet paper, Rudy. I do, like, but, you know, I got to be honest, early on when they were raiding that shit, you know, I had a, a couple weeks where, like, I wasn't, we weren't, like, balling with the, with, the, with the toilet paper. So I had to come up with alternative means to clean my asshole. Mm-hmm. And um, I kind of learned to like it. I created um, a Mexican bidet which was I put Mentos in a two liter soda and the the chemicals, the chemicals combined will shoot out the stream of the soda into your asshole if you squat over it. And I like that a lot. You know, I, I started to use that instead of toilet paper. And then after that, I will just look in my shower. There's a lot of my grandma or my wife's back hair that has oh. fallen off and i will just plug my ass with that and it, it works as a yeah. absorbent sponge <laughs> sometimes i use a cocha bun or uh, a cocha like that what was it a concha what bun, fool. you know like okay. a concha bun like the pan dulce like the oh the, yeah it's like princess leia's hair like yes a yes bun yes like that. with the with the, the circle yeah yeah the sort of pink powder like a turtle around. shell yeah yeah, like yeah. A, you know you could just powder, you powder your ass with that thing put it in there it's also like a good um, protector for Como City said the hemorrhoids. And, and so, and sad girl, she's doing good through all this. So I imagine your kids are driving her crazy. I mean, how many? Of, they're all home, right? Well, some of them. Uh oh. Not happening? all of them. What, well, what? The, like my oldest, my three oldest are in their twenties, full, so they live. Okay, elsewhere. got it. They got like fifteen kids of their own, so you know they got their own thing, but. Like, uh, most of my kids, I, I mean, I believe are in my house. It's hard to tell sometimes because um, I love uh, uh, weed and nitrous and modelos. And so I'm oftentimes not even really aware of what's going on in my household. I thought you were doing yeah. much better with that stuff. I guess because the quarantine, you kind of lose it a little bit. That's right. Like, you know, I got a new job at the uh, Sparklets Delivery. And so since I'm not driving right now, I just like fuck it, you know. I just get fucked up. And wow, I'm sorry to hear that. You must be depressed. A lot of, a lot of YouTube. Depressed dog is the best thing ever. It's like I'm 15 okay. years old again. I don't do I shit. I just get fucked up. I, I didn't wife, know you were working you know? for Sparklers. You were back at Jamba Juice last time I talked to you. Yeah, Jamba Juice was was good, but you know, like um, my friend, my friend, you know, uh, uh, ceiling fan. He um, you know, Hector from Baldwin Park. Sure. Yeah, they call that Vato ceiling fan. Uh-huh. He um he got a managerial job at Sparklets, and he's like, hey, fool, you want to get a you know good benefits? I could mm-hmm. hook you up. And so, you know, I applied, and next thing you know, I got like a mira good job. Nice. Well, Rudy, it's good to talk. Like to. I'm it. glad you're. 
I'm glad you're thriving in this uh, difficult time and look forward to I seeing, am thriving. seeing you out in the world. I hope say hi to Sad Girl for me. And uh, um, it's just good to talk to you and good to see you're doing well. Get me Catherwood back, okay? Okay. Hey, like everyone out there, Kulo Break, at Kulo Breaker on Instagram, you know, that's where you can hit me up. And I'm giving a lot of Corona lockdown tips. So well, right now is a good time to get, get in touch with me. Speaking of that, uh, people want to know if you're drinking Corona. Why just Modelo's? It's a better beer, fool. It's just okay. Be- I, okay. like it's just okay. more enjoyable for me. There's a better. Um, there's notes of lilac and cinnamon in the in the beer. Okay, well, nice. And the funniest thing of all for me, Rudy, is that uh, my producer Susan Pinsky uh, put at Kulo Breaker up on the stream. So it's, <laughs> it's been. Is that what it is? C U L O Breaker. Yeah, that's, that's Breaker. Rudy. Wow. And I got that name, you know. It's right she, here in the title. I've broken it, she, an ass or two. In my she, life. She the other producer, not, she Caleb, does, is has, laughing his ass off right oh, now. She so. has no idea what that means, Rudy. So, well done. And, well, you uh, can show her later tonight. Because <laughs> you can show her later tonight by okay. using your enormous pito. All right. And just blast her right from behind. And then All right. She has no idea what it, it means. Will, oftentimes, oftentimes, it will break her ass because, you know, she's not prepared for that type of trauma. And... You will Rudy? her out her butthole. Rudy. He's enjoying this too much. Give me my <laughs> back. Give, give me my back, all right? Okay. Give, exactly. <laughs> Good to see you, man. You take care. I love you, Rudy. <laughs> Let me grab a call really quickly here. Uh, How'd that go, Drew? Uh, hold on a second, Mike. I got a, I got a call. I need a, a cleanser. I need a palate cleanser. Daniel, go ahead. Drew, what's happening, man? How are you? Good, buddy. What's up? I got you. Nothing much, man. I, I, me and my uh, lady friend, we both had Corona and, um, hmm. kind of just wondering, like we're noticing, um, so it's been a whole month since we, we've gone through it. It's, it's past, but we have like these lingering effects, um, yeah. odd headaches and dry headaches. Yeah. And then uh shortness of breath is happening a lot quicker. Just like from doing like 20, 20, 30 pushups, I'm short of breath where I wouldn't, before before this, I wouldn't. Uh, um, right. So, so there's a couple of things. So, so, so yeah, that's, lo- lots of nefarious post-acute symptoms people are talking about. Everyone just heard about the no taste and no smell, but lots of weird fatigues, lingering yeah, low-grade yeah. fevers, short, all kinds of crazy stuff going on for weeks afterwards. I've heard a lot of this stuff, so that's not unusual. Ah. And, and it's so protracted, it deconditions you. So part of it is you're just run down by this thing. It just wipes you out. So there's that. Yeah, man. Um, yeah, yeah. I feel like the immune system went so high, and then it comes back to like maybe neutral zone or baseline, and then you start to notice the uh, the lingering effects or something. But um, yeah, so I was just I, I guess that's what we will find out in the future if there is long term effects. I, but um, I, I one more question. So. Um, I don't think so, but go ahead. Uh, one more question. This is uh, we're sexual related, and um, that last last guy was hilarious, but. Um, when me and my girlfriend have sex occasionally, if it's like for 15 minutes and or more, um, her vagina will kind of like swell up a bit, um, get irritated. Right. And so this is like, so not that, enough, not, that could be not enough to cause, but that could, she probably took some antibiotics. Did she during the COVID? Uh, we did not. We actually just did lots of tea and zinc and all these good herbs and stuff. Um, but no, yeah, no, this is, this has been going on for, the whole relationship pretty much all right the other thing is is she on a birth control pill she was and she recently has gotten off of that that may correct this problem because these progesterone these high potency progesterone pills cause an irritation of the vaginal lining it's an atrophic vaginitis and that's the most common reason for this kind of thing gotcha all right, yeah, man. so that'll kind of if 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 that should right, get thanks, better. Man, appreciate it. All right, buddy, take care. Sometimes also some estrogen cream can be helpful as well. Uh, to if she, if it keeps going, you can talk to a gynecologist about that. Susan, were you saying something? Nope. Oh, so Mike, uh, yeah, Rudy was in rare form. Yeah. I mean, I mean, was it rare, really, or for him? I, you know him pretty well. I, I, it was. I, that's what I was going to say. Which is which is often Rudy's uh, condition, rare form. Yeah. So, huh, challenging, man. 
Uh, I heard your daughter chatting it up, though. How's she liking the uh, lockdown? She thinks it's the greatest thing that's ever happened. Are you kidding me? No school. And she just hangs out with us all day, which, mm-hmm. you know, drives us up the fucking wall. But, um, <laughs> you, <laughs> she just, yeah, all, like, all play. We do homework and stuff, but it's like she's doing homework with her parents <laughs> at six as opposed to being in a school with her. You know, like, it's the best. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Tameamnemist, I guess that name, allergy to condoms, that's another common reason. Yes, if he was wearing a condom, that the irritation could occur. Uh, I want you that's just flat out 15 minutes of friction between skin. And sometimes it's just that. Sometimes it's just, you know, like old. if I rubbed my arm over and over again for 15 minutes, it would probably get swelled up and irritated. And, and I know that um, speed to delivery is more your mode. Than, yeah. Uh, if you than, yeah. if you are a girl who gets irritated by a lot of uh, activity, I'm your guy because <laughs> I can I can bust like four nuts in two minutes. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, some people asking does smoking cigarette increase the risk for COVID? Uh, we used to think so, but there's apparently some data now that that's not that much the issue. Uh, and more we're worried about obesity and hypertension. That seems to be more than diabetes. That seems to be more the issue. Uh, somebody's also asking, what about the pneumonia vaccine that has zero effect against viral pneumonia? That pneumonia vaccine, there are two of them, the Pneumovax and the Prevnar. You have to take both. They're for people over the age of 65, or 60 at least, because it accounts for about 30% of all the community-acquired pneumonias in that age group, which are due to something called pneumococcus, or their strep, strep oh, pneumonia. So that's a bacterial <laughs> pneumococcus. That's a streptococcal pneumonia, not a viral pneumonia. And yes, we can protect against that, but that has nothing to do with COVID. Nothing, nothing, nothing. Uh, why does How bad is hypertension have to be a concern? I, I There was a review in the New England Journal a couple of days ago where they were looking at all the different pre-existing factors, and it was stunning how frequently hypertension was a risk factor. It was uh, it, it, it dwarfed everything else. I don't know why. I don't know why. How come? Like how how do you gauge how high, how much you have hypertension? I mean, it seems it, like it, it's it, really difficult to. Well, you should know if you have difficult to control hypertension, if you're on multiple medications, if your doctor's always worried about it. But the thing about this data is it didn't differentiate controlled from uncontrolled hypertension. It's something about the, the process of having your, your right atrium and your heart and your kidneys miscommunicate to cause high blood pressure that is somehow, it must have something to do with the cytokine cascade. It must have something to do with the inflammatory mediators that get out of control with with covid and again the doctors are getting very skilled at getting people on ventilators and using the ventilators appropriately using the remdesivir the antiviral medicine though i'm hearing mixed things about that and then using the uh, il-6 inhibitors the interleukin-6 6 inhibitors try to break the cytokine storm that people are getting into a lot of good benefit from that some are reporting good results with the hydroxychloroquine zithromag zinc uh, but again the jury is still out on some of this stuff mike I, I think I got to kind of wrap things up. Uh, anything you want to promote? Uh, at Mikey Likes You on, at, excuse me, at Mikey Likes You One on Twitter and Instagram. That is the Instagram and Twitter handle for my new podcast, Mikey Likes You, available everywhere podcasts are available. Uh, I do think it is one of, if not the best, health and fitness podcasts out there because it touches on everything that is involved in making yourself healthy and that is of course you know drew is it's a lot more top heavy on mental health than um people realize right Um, you can be you can be shredded um and be going insane um and that doesn't make for a very health healthy or fit person um and so with my experience in addiction and uh rancid relationships and all that stuff i feel like I'm in a good place to be able to at least guide people in the right direction because I've made all the mistakes. I've made every single mistake you can make, and I don't want to have people do the same. And um, I'm just getting, while we're discussing this, I'm getting notification that Duncan Trussell's new Netflix uh, cartoon series, Midnight Gospel, is coming out. What's the nice. count? Tonight at midnight. And it is a, I'm in it. Are you in it all? You do, did you do anything with Duncan? No. It's really, like really creative and funny. The, the team involved with it was like world class. Like the people that create all the amazing cartoons you love, they were all involved with this particular project. And I'm so pleased to be a part of it. We'll sort of push it out on my on my uh, 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 Twitter. But uh, 
All right, my friend. Let's look and see if anybody have any other uh, questions. Uh, what happened to the guy at Cedars who did blood thinners but had to have his leg amputated? Yes, uh, activation of clotting seems to be one of the complications of the coronavirus in people that are really sick on ventilators. But bl blood thinners don't work the way they normally do. In other words, it probably has something to do. It's not so much the activation of the clotting cascade as much as the cytokine activation that's causing platelet aggregation. So they're having a lot of trouble um getting getting people who have this clotting complication to unclot and this one young man had a clot in his artery in his leg and lost his leg because of it so that is happening have you ever it's a little bit different have you ever seen with people with meningitis or with flesh-eating bacteria that get their limbs taken off you hear about that story once in a while it's it's yeah. something in that same zone as as this is what goes on with covid again this whole issue i've been reading just tons about uh, cytokine storm it is we are going to come out of this understanding our immunological system a lot more clearly uh, than we have because it's it's forcing us to look at some of these very complex biologies and come up with a sense of where it's dysregulating, uh, where it's upregulating too much, where it's uh, not downregulating sufficiently, and where by blocking some of the upregulation, we're not causing even more trouble or blocking immune immune responses where where somebody needs it. It's very complicated. All right, Mike. Good to talk to you, man. Stay safe. And um, always a pleasure. Thank you for having me. Say hi to Bianca for me. I haven't seen her forever. And um, I will. You know. And uh, Susan, say goodbye. Hold on, hold on. Where's my mic? <laughs> Love you, Mike. Bye, Susan. Love you too. And uh, maybe take uh, Rudy's advice tonight, <laughs> and you guys can experiment with cool breaking. I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah, you just on behalf of Rudy. Thank you. Mike. I'm game. I'm game. All right. Sure. <laughs> and uh, we will. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, we will, I'll wrap up too. And uh, we will be in here on Tuesday uh, next time. Uh, do we have guests on Tuesday, Susan? Oh, we're working on um, David Chef. David Chef from Beautiful Boy. So uh, he has a charity we're working on there. And uh, hopefully we will, we'll, one way or another. Just a dose of Drew. We'll be back around 2 o'clock on Tuesday with a dose one way or the other. And so we'll see you then. Thanks. The strangest call you've ever received on your show uh, from a caller. I'm not sure you want me to really get into this, but a guy that called and said, you guys are willing to listen to everything, and I want to know why people freak out when they hear about my monogamous, loving relationship. Turns out it was his dog, Brutus, in a Killy Collie mix. And um, he was having relations with him. Yeah, let's talk about something else. I think so.